Okay, let's take a look at a few examples of simplifying expressions with rational exponents. The first example I want to look at is just the product of 4x to the 3 fifths and x to the 7 fifths. Okay, uh, now of course there's nothing preventing us from finding the product of these two factors, the two powers of x, uh, first and then multiplying by 4. That's just reassociating things. I'll go ahead and write it explicitly here, um, although generally you wouldn't uh, include this step in your work. Uh, so let's see, we have x to the 7 fifths there. Um, now, of course, you can see the advantage here. We have a product of two powers uh, with the same base, and so we know that uh, we can simply add the exponents there to find that product. Uh, so we can rewrite this as 4 times x to the uh, 3 fifths plus 7 fifths power. Of course, 3 fifths plus 7 fifths is 10 fifths, or 2. And there we go. We've got our first uh, answer. Okay. Second example. All right. Suppose we have the uh, power 3x to the 1 third times y to the negative 2, all that raised to the second power. Okay. Now remember that these exponents will distribute over a product. So if everything inside the parentheses here that's being raised to some exponent is being multiplied together, we can bring this exponent in on each one of these factors. We can distribute it in that manner. Uh, so we have 3 to the second power. We have uh, a times x to the 1 third also to the second power. And then a y to the negative 2, again, also to the second power. Okay, so we've uh, made this a little bit nicer, although we still have uh, a power raised to some exponent here. We have a power raised to some exponent here. Uh, this, of course, we know immediately is 9. Uh, maybe we make that replacement. Here, remember when you have a power raised to another power, we can multiply the exponents. So 1 third times 2, of course, is 2 thirds. And here, likewise, we have a power raised to another power, so we multiply the exponents. That's going to be y to the negative fourth power. Okay. Now, generally, uh, we want to keep our, uh, our final form um, with no negative exponents, if we can avoid them. Uh, here, of course, we have a y to the negative fourth. Remember, that's the exact same thing as multiplying by 1 over y to the positive fourth power. And so going ahead and doing that multiplication basically just puts the y to the fourth, positive fourth, uh, in the denominator. Okay? And so that right there is our final answer. Okay, now let's take a look at a third example. This one will be a quotient. So how about we have 2x to the third times y to the one-third, all of that over 8, times x to the negative 1, times y squared. Okay. Okay, so in this example, I'm going to, again, write as my first step something we probably wouldn't normally write, but just so you can see uh, the structure of this thing. Would you agree this is identical to the product of the fractions 2 eighths times x to the third over x to the negative one times y to the one third over y to the second. That should be clear, right? We multiply by fractions by multiplying across the top and across the bottom. Um, but notice the advantage uh, looking at this expression in this way gives us. We now have a quotient of powers with the same base involved here and here, okay? So we can uh, rewrite this, of course, as that base x uh, to a new exponent, uh, that exponent being the difference of the two uh, previous exponents. Um, and actually, this 2 eighths here, let's go ahead and reduce that to 1 fourth while we're at it. Um, and then here again, we have x to the 3 minus 
negative 1 uh, power, and then times in a similar manner y to the 1 third minus 2 power. From here, things are pretty straightforward. Uh, we still have the 1 fourth kind of coming along for the ride. Uh, we can e simplify this difference. 3 minus negative 1 is 4, so we have times x to the fourth. And here as well, uh, we have 1 third minus 2. Let's see if we write that 2 as a fraction. That would be 6 over 3. So 1 third minus 6 thirds would be negative 5 thirds. Okay. Um, and this is pretty tight, but again, we want to avoid leaving negative exponents in our answer. This is kind of a standard way to show expressions. Um, and so we can think of this uh, y to the negative 5 thirds power uh, as a, let me go ahead and write these other pieces in here, as a 1 over y to the positive 5 thirds power. And so jamming all that together, let's see, let's write it as a fraction here. We would be left with x to the fourth on the top. Remember, that's x to the fourth over 1. Um, and then on the bottom, we have the 4. And then we have y to the 5 thirds. Okay? And so that's our answer there. Okay, so for example, 4. This one's a little on the long side here, at least to write out initially. Uh, we have x to the 1 half times y to the negative 2, all that's being raised to the second power, times another power, namely 27y to the sixth, all that to the one third, and then finally that times x to the one third times y squared, all of that to the zero power. Okay, so if we want to simplify that, what do we need to do? Well, here again, look at each one of these uh, factors, each one of these three big factors here. Uh, this is a product raised to some power. We know how to deal with that. We can distribute that exponent across both of those factors uh, to get x to the one-half squared and then times y to the neg negative two squared. So again, that just comes down in each one of those factors. Here too, uh, we can bring this one-third distributed across both of these factors. We have a 27 here. We have a y to the sixth there. So that becomes uh, times 27 to the one-third times y to the sixth to the one-third. Um, and here again, we could do the same thing here. We could say this is x to the one-third to the zero, y to the second to the zero. But anything to the zero whether it be x to the one-third or y squared or the entire product of those two things, anything to the zero is simply one. Now, that, there is one exception to that. Zero to the zero is indeterminate. But this whole thing is effectively a one. So I don't even have to mo write anything down here. It would just be times one anyways, uh, which doesn't change anything. Okay, So all of this is equal to this. Now, we've got some simplification to do yet. x to the one-half to the second, right, we would need to multiply those two exponents, so that becomes x to the 2 over 2, or 1, and x to the first, or is just x. Um, here we have a y to the negative 2 to the 2, again, power to a power, we can multiply the exponents, that becomes y to the negative fourth. Here we have a 27th to the 1 third power. 27 you should recognize, that's just 3 cubed, right? We have a times 3 cubed, and then to the 1 third, when we multiply those exponents, again, because we have a power raised to a power, uh, here again, they cancel. We get 1, so 3 to the first power is, again, just 3. So that's going to behave much like this x did here in the next version of this expression. That's just going to be times 3. And then last but not least, we still have a y to the 6 to the 1 third. Multiplying those two exponents together, we get 6 over 3 as the new exponent, which, of course, is just 2. Okay, so this is starting to tighten up, but we can do uh, even more. Notice we have a y to the negative fourth. We have a y squared here. Everything's being multiplied together. Um, and again, we normally wouldn't write this next step, but just so you can see what's really going on here, uh, we have a uh, uh, an x, we've got a 3, 
uh, and then we have a y to the negative fourth and a y to the second, we can rearrange these things, right? That's the commutative property of multiplication, so that we have y to the negative fourth and y squared next to one another. Now we see immediately uh, the rule we can apply here, we can add those exponents since we're dealing with a product of two powers with the same base. Uh, so we've got y to the, uh, let's see, negative 4 plus 2, that'd be negative 2. We've still got a 3. We've still got an x. Okay, here again, we want to avoid leaving in our final answer any negative powers. So that's going to be uh, multiplying by 1 over y squared. And now I think you can see what's going to happen here. We're going to end up with a y squared on the bottom. And we still have an x and a 3 up top. Customarily, we write the constant uh, factor first, and then the variable. Okay, And then if there were more complicated expressions, they would follow. Right? So we're working from left to right, uh, simple factors to more complicated factors. Okay, So that's it, 3x over y squared. That's our answer for that example. For the last example, let's consider a power of a quotient. So suppose we have the quotient negative 27 x to the negative 3 fourths, all of that over y, and then all of this is going to be raised to the negative 1 third power. Okay. Okay, looking at this expression and trying to figure out what should we do to simplify things, looking inside the parentheses, there's not a whole lot we can do here. Um, I suppose we do see an x to a negative exponent, uh, which you might be tempted to go ahead and, and move that down, right? Multiply by 1 over x to the 3 fourths power, um, which effectively just puts it in the denominator. But let's not rush to do that, because this is a part of a larger problem and who knows, that exponent might become negative later, and we just have to move it right back up again. So let's be a little more efficient about that and wait to move our negative exponents uh, someplace so that we end up with only positive exponents. Um, well, let's wait until the very end to do that. Okay, so if there's nothing we can do on the inside of the parentheses, uh, notice we do have a quotient raised to some power. And we know that we can apply that exponent to both the numerator and the denominator in that type of situation. Uh, so in other words, we have uh, this entire numerator, negative 27x to the negative 3 fourths, all of that to the negative 1 third, over the entire denominator, which is just y, to that same negative 1 third power. Now it's a little more clear what we should do as the, as the next step here. Up top we have a product to a power. And just like um, over here where this exponent distributes both to the numerator and denominator, um, we can distribute this to the two factors involved. So we would have, let's see, negative 27, that's one factor, uh, to the negative one-third. We would have uh, x to the negative 3 fourths, all of that to the negative 1 third. And then all that is sitting over y to the negative 1 third still. At this point, we can see over here we have x to a power that's raised to another power. We know what to do in that situation. We just multiply the two exponents involved. 3 fourths times 1 third, those 3's are going to cancel, right? And furthermore, this is a negative times a negative. That's going to be positive when it's all said and done. So we're left with only a 1 over 4 as our exponent there. Everything else went away. Uh, we still have to deal with these two things. Okay. Now we do have a lot of negative exponents going on. It doesn't look like there's anything more outside of uh, this. So let's go ahead and move... Um, those negative powers to uh, the other side of that fraction bar there. Again, negative 27 to the negative one-third, that's the same as 1 over negative 27 to the positive one-third. That's mm -hmm. going to put a negative 27 to the positive one-third down below. And likewise here, you're dividing by y, y to the negative one-third. That is to say you're dividing by 1 over y to the positive one-third 
But dividing by 1 over something is the same as multiplying by the something, right? So we can move this as a factor to the numerator, changing the exponent to become positive 1 third. It just makes it a little bit cleaner, a little bit easier to see what's going on. Um, there's not much more we can do with the y to the 1 third and x to the 1 fourth. Down here, however, we can certainly take the cube root. Remember, raising something to the 1 over nth power is taking the principal nth root of the base. So the cube root of 27, of course, is 3. The cube root of this negative is a negative 1. So when we're all done here, we have uh, negative 3 in the bottom. And on top, we have the product of those two things, which I will write in reverse order only because it's slightly more aesthetically pleasing to have these variables in alphabetic order. Uh, certainly, if we wrote them reversed, that would be fine, too. Okay, so that is the answer to our final example of simplifying expressions with rational, uh, rational exponents.